Hey everybody, it's Donovan uh, back with another video. Today I just want to talk about uh, college application slash admissions process as a veteran. I myself just re recently went through this process and I think I learned some tips and tricks um, that may help or just some info because I know a lot of fellow veterans, you know, or those are still active uh, are kind of lost in the process. And there's some things that I wish I had known even with the research I had done before that would have helped in the long run. Uh, so first, let's talk about uh, applicant status. So there's freshman or transfer applicant status for a lot of these colleges. Um, transfer, I was a transfer uh, student uh, status because I'd taken college courses throughout service and before I joined the military. Freshman would have been if I had uh, less than 15 transferable credit, a semester credit hours, depending on the school. Some may be 30, some may be 60. You also have to look at quarter hours too. Uh, I myself was a transfer. So as a transfer uh, for a lot of universities, they don't require letters of recommendations. Um, they don't require your high school GPA. If you're like me, I didn't do too well in high school. And so my GPA would have <laughs> knocked me out of a lot of schools. But luckily, while being a transfer, going to college while in, I was able to earn uh, a very good GPA. So that helped a lot. Uh, but yeah, if you're a freshman, you know, you'll still be using your high school GPA, um, your SAT, ACT, what else? And sometimes letters of recommendations, there might be different essays, uh, different requirements for freshmen or transfer. I will say that as a transfer, uh, your college um, your college options can be limited, especially depending on the time of year that you're trying to apply. Um, freshmen, you know, or that means you're, you know, you're pretty much a clean slate, you know, so you can apply anywhere for the most part, as long as you meet the deadlines. Um, so I want to talk about the different type of applications. Uh, so there's the Common App, Coalition, university university specific and then state specific apps uh, so common app is the app that i prefer the one that i use the most uh it's a centralized application where you can apply to 20 different universities now there's about 800 available for freshmen and a little over 500 if you're a transfer student now 20 may you know you may be like oh why is there a limit but 20 colleges is a lot more uh, there's a lot of colleges you know probably more than you need um I wouldn't really need to apply to more, especially for application fees. Uh, some of the fees can be $50, $60. You know, I paid 80 bucks for one. It wasn't on the Common App, but 80 bucks for one of the applications. Um, but the Common App, I think, is very useful because it's just like building a LinkedIn profile. You know, you go in, you enter in all your information. Uh, you can select your veteran status, you know, race, gender, all these other things. Uh, you can put your GPA, previous coursework. And you can also, what I really loved about the Common App, is that you can send your transcript directly to the Common App. For me, this was especially useful because I've attended three different colleges, um, part-time, of course, and so I have credits from all over, and transcripts can be expensive when you're sending it to another college. Some can cost $20, you know, $15, whatever. It all adds up, and at least the Common App, once you submit your application, the college gets your transcripts right then there. You don't have to wait five days or for... Um, those are you with CCAFs, CCAFs or JSTs. Um, if they're not electronic, you know, it can take a couple of weeks, you know, but by then you missed the deadline. So that's what I really loaded about the Common App. Um, it's pretty plug and play. You can select up to 20 schools, as I said before. So that's my preferred. Uh, that's how I apply it to the school that I'm going to and to a lot of colleges. They have a lot of uh, state, they have state universities, they have private, they even have a few international universities. And like I said, depending on if you're a freshman or transfer status, there will be different portals. Freshmen have more colleges, but transfer, you get all the, probably any college that you would want. You know, they have a lot of the IBs, um, you know, your Stanford's, any of those better schools that you want to go to. Then there's also the Coalition app, which I'm not sure they're in competition, but they're very similar. The thing that I did not like, like about the Coalition app is that you cannot submit your transcripts directly. Um, and then for me, it was harder to track application status or requirements because Coalition app, uh, the way they, like, when you submit it on Common App, you know, you get, like, a receipt or everything saying that's been submitted. Coalition app, depending on the college, I wasn't getting that feedback. Uh, and so I was waiting a bit to see. And then one college emailed me, like, a month or two later, like, oh, you're missing this. And they didn't give me a portal login to check my applicant status uh, in any of the emails. But Coalition, there is no limit, which is very helpful. Uh, the only thing is, so they'll, they'll just list all the colleges on there, but you may not realize until you try to submit an application that this is freshman only. Um, whereas Common App has that distinction of the portal itself between freshman transfer coalition. It's just all together. 
Uh, but you can upload your essays directly to Coalition app, which is like Common App. You can also upload letters of recommendation. Um, I think it's very useful too. Uh, it's just to me, Common App is better because the transcript portion, that's just myself. And then also what I do like about the Coalition app is that as veterans, uh, once you select on your profile, it'll give you the list of colleges that offer application fee waivers for veterans. As I said earlier, some of these applications can cost 80, you know, 60 bucks, some 100, depending on what school you're going to. And so, you know, that can add up. And so I think there's, um, there's good in both, especially if you've only gone to one college, uh, I'd say Coalition App's pretty, you know, it's very good. Uh, but if you go on a multiple, Common App can help just because you can submit all your transcripts to them once. Versus Coalition App, you're sending it to every every school you apply to each time. Uh, then, all right, uh, so we've, we've gone in Common and Coalition. Now I want to talk about university-specific apps. University-specific apps can be like your UCLA's or any any university, you know, like Oregon State, you know, Go Beavers. Um, I'm wearing Bucky's hat, not Beavers, but you know. Um, Oregon State, you know, UCLA, University of Texas, uh, University of Michigan, University of Massachusetts. You know, all these schools have their own, uh, for the most part, university-specific applications, too. But they may also be offered via Common or Coalition. University-specific app, um, I think it's useful if the application isn't available to you through Common or Coalition because you're building a profile each time that can be time-consuming. You know, depending on how many colleges you're applying to, you have to fill in all your information, sell all your transcripts again, uh, write all these specific essays for this college. Uh, to me, it's just a lot more work. But if you're only applying to a few colleges, then University Specific is perfectly uh, good app. And like I said, some schools are only University Specific, especially if you're a transfer. So that may be something to look out for. Uh, then I'll last about the app, application types. I want to talk about state-specific apps. Uh, so I know that you know, uh, Texas state system does have their own state specific state specific apps. Uh, I believe it's called Apply Texas. I applied to a few schools through there. To me, it's not as user friendly as others, but it is nice because again, central location. You build the profile once, it saves all your information, uh, and then when you submit an app, there might be a few things, uh, unique requirements for each school. You know, let's say you want to apply to University of Texas San Antonio. You fill that out, but oh, University of Texas Austin requires this other information. It's just things added to it, but you're not doing a whole nother profile, which I thought was pretty cool. I think also like the University, uh, University of California system does the same. I'm not sure what other states, probably I think uh, State University of New York um, schools, uh, states that have a lot of public universities pretty much. I know, I don't believe Oregon does, um, but yes, yeah, so this is pretty useful for that. I only use the Texas State one. Uh, it wasn't too bad, but again, to me, Common App was the most user-friendly. All right, so I want to talk about some of the challenges that I faced too. For me, because uh, a lot of the colleges do require essays, essay writing. Uh, if you haven't taken a college writing course in a while, or your grammar is all from playing video games, or you know, text messaging, Instagram, whatever it may be, uh, what you're writing may not be the most literate for what uh, the requirement is for college. You know, so I, when I was writing my essays, I had some peers review it. I had people like, hey, you know, why are you writing like this doesn't sound right? Um, so I say when you're writing your essays before you submit, have multiple eyes review your essays. Have in yourself read it aloud and see if it makes sense, if it's getting the point across. Or if you're just rambling on like I am in this video right now, you know. Uh, so that was one of the challenges. And also, because I got out of the service at a weird time in the middle of fall semester, I'm applying for winter slash spring term to on school. Uh, there are limits to this. Not every college is open for applications for winter slash spring term. Then also the deadlines are shorter. So a lot of the applications, they open up on say August, September. Deadlines due October 1st, November 1st, whatever it may be, unless it's rolling admissions, which is a whole different process. Um, and then you hear back your admission status December 1st. Well, school starts January 15th, so you're giving me a month and a half to decide. And then granted, if you're already getting to other schools, they may have a, hey, you need to commit to us by December 1st, you're losing your spot, excuse me. And so that was one of the issues I saw too, I actually got into a school uh, that I want to go to after I already committed to another school um, because the deadlines, wait, the school I'm going to, the deadline for enrollment was December 1st. Was one of the schools I wanted to go to that I got into was like, hey, it was like December 1st, I think is when they, or November 30th, you know, the you know, the, the last hour they gave me the decision, which, you know, isn't too helpful for me. I think if it was fall, it would have been a lot easier. 
and there would be more colleges available also. Uh, another thing, uh, letters of recommendations. I saw, so like I said, I've gone to three different colleges plus my military transcripts that'll be applied. Uh, so it's been difficult to get letters of recommendations. Uh, first college course I took was back in, were back in 2012. All right, it's now 2021, you know, I'm eight years, nine years removed from high school. Uh, it's a bit difficult to get letters of recommendation when they've already had so many students and they don't remember you. So what you can do is you can reach out to these specific schools and hope that, you know, you can get a peer, or not even a peer recommendation, but maybe, a, you know, your commander, your superintendent, supervisor, um, maybe you volunteered for the chapel, you know, some other entity that can write this letter, letter recommendation for you in case your school isn't really, or is reluctant to give you one. Uh, I think that was one of the biggest challenges for me and that definitely limited some of the colleges that I applied to. I didn't apply to some, I didn't apply to any that required letters of recommendation because I knew, or I didn't even try, I probably should have tried, but I felt that it would be way too difficult to get an accurate letter of recommendation when some of the courses I have taken are online too because of COVID or they've been at uh, different education centers. And so these teachers, you know, they're in and out. And so they move bases, you know, so there isn't, how am I gonna find these people, right? They don't remember you. You're like, oh, Donovan, um, I don't remember you. So that was one of the challenges for me. And the last I wanna hit on some bonuses, some plugs. There are some services to help you aside from your soldier for life slash taps class. There is service to school. Uh, they have Instagram, they have a website. You can apply, you can get a peer mentor who will help you through that admissions process. Uh, I didn't use them myself. I did sign up for them, but I signed up for them too uh, late for me when applications were already coming due. Um, but from what I've seen, they're a very good program. Uh, they boast about college admission. They say, you know, your experience, we can get you into these top schools. If you go to their website, they have a whole bunch of partners. I'll put the link in the description. They have a whole bunch of different uh, partners that they work with. Uh, so they can help you with admissions, veterans, counselors, all these other things. Uh, so I'd say use service to school. And also there's a Warrior Scholar Project, Warrior Scholars Project, I believe it's called. I'll put that in the link in the description too. Uh, from what I've seen, they have programs where you can do like boot camps. You know, we've been out of school for a while. We're traditional. You know, we're not doing four or five classes while in. We're taking two, one at a time. The Warrior Scholar Project, in conjunction with uh, their partners, school partners, do boot camps. You know, I saw they have humanities, if you want to be a humanities major, STEM, uh, writing boot camps and everything to help you uh, get back into the college, uh, to help you acclimate back to college uh, rigor and academics. Um, and yeah, there's other services. I say just do all the research. One thing I'll really harp on is deadlines, deadlines, deadlines. Make sure you know your deadlines well in advance uh, because the last thing you want to do is be writing your essay, you know, at 8 p.m. and you're uh, your applications due, you know, 12 a.m., you know, it's due the next day. And oh, wait, that's Eastern Standard Time. You're on the West Coast and you already missed it. So, you know, I say check the deadlines early, check when the application's open because I did miss some colleges that were open, uh, I believe, August, like August 1st, and they closed like September 1st, you know. Uh, so I'd be on the lookout for all that. And just best of luck with all your admissions and get all the fee waivers that you can. Look, even if it doesn't explicitly say on the website, always ask admissions and they may offer a veteran's application fee waiver. That can save you 50 bucks, you know, 60, however much money, um, that'll help a lot. So yeah, that was my college application admission process. Have a good day.